What if you combine the Epic Storm and Paradoxical Outcome and Legacy? That's what we're doing today. Paradox Engine, The One Ring, Burning Wish. Well, let's go check it out. The Epic Storm meets Paradoxical Outcome combo here today. And we have Magic Online user Velgrim, who's very active in the Storm Discord, to thank for that. So Velgrim, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. And when you look at this deck, it's pretty much the Epic Storm, right? Uh, so you have the same mana base, but we're stealing the Urza Sagas from the Paradoxical Outcome combo deck. And then we're also borrowing the One Ring plus a single copy of Paradox Engine that you then cast a spell, you untap the One Ring, you draw more cards, and you keep going and going. You have a Manifold Key that you can use to untap the One Ring that you can search off of Urza Saga. So that's pretty cool. It also untaps Grim Monolith, a card that we're playing today over Chrome Mox. Really, those are what we're borrowing from the Paradoxical Outcome combo deck. But the rest of it's just the epics from the Lion's Eye Diamonds, Petals, Dark Ritual, Thought Seas, Veil of Summer, Burning Wish. That's all the epic storm. And then when you go to the sideboard, this is where I sort of disagree with Velgrim, today's donation deck person. Uh, we were, went a little bit back and forth on this, and Velgrim really liked the huge wishboard. So today we're playing a couple cards that I personally disagree with. So Velgrim wants Life from the Loam, so that way you can accrue Urza Saga value. And... The reason I disagree with this is that you're a Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond, Mox Opal deck that also has Burning Wish. There's going to be matchups where you open up a hand with a bunch of fast mana against a deck like the Initiative, and you're going to want the option to make 12 or 14 goblins on the first turn. We can no longer do that. Instead, you're forced to Life from the Loam, possibly an Urza Saga back. I, I don't like it, if I'm being honest. So it feels a little too cute to me. And other than that, I actually don't hate the rest of the sideboard so i really love the aether spell bomb having that as a card to get off of urza saga to bounce an archon of Emeria is so brilliant and i also like the haywire might what i'd like to see changed is this should be an empty the warrens and then i'd probably cut the echoing truth for another copy of carpet of flowers i think i would likely make that change but i mean small adjustment there I don't know how much I love Transmute Artifact for Paradox Engine, because if you're going to Burning Wish for Transmute and have the difference in mana to get the Paradox Engine, I don't know how often you're going to have spare cards in your hand, because Burning Wish is usually best with Lion's Eye Diamond, but we'll see today. I have a feeling that this is not a great Lion's Eye Diamond deck, because Lion's Eye Diamond doesn't help with the One Ring, but... I could be wrong. I'm not perfect. So today we're going to find out. And uh, this is my third league of the day, third recording. Hopefully it goes well. The first one went really well. Second one was okay. I hope we crush this one. So stick around and find out. I will see you in the first match. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks that's enough for now let's play some magic match number one we're on the draw we've opened up a hand that doesn't really play magic unfortunately we need to send it back okay so this hand is a one ring away from greatness i think i'm going to keep this and we'll bottom the extra grim monolith volcanic island into ponder sure and our opponent shuffles their library Dark Ritual, Lion's Eye Diamond, let's fetch, grab an Underground Sea, let's play Manifold Key. So I could have played Dark Ritual, I don't think it's correct to throw away Ritual in order to spew out a Grim Monolith this turn. I'll pass. Kind of a cute play we're allowed to make, if we so choose, is that I could play Dark Ritual off of the Mox Opal and then use Manifold Key to filter the Opal into Red or Blue. All right, they play a Brainstorm and then Scalding Tarn or Underground Sea into a Mishra's Bobble. This is likely just Grix's Delver. Our opponent draws off Bobble. We'll draw for a turn, and it's a Ponder. Dark Ritual. Let's Thought Seize them. Force of Will exiling a Murktide Regent. Okay. Let's play a Grim Monolith. 
And we'll ponder. Burn five. So we found Burning Wish. Belgrim, I'm, I promise I'm not going to harp on this the entire league. However, if there was an empty the Warrens in the sideboard right now, we can make, I don't know, 14 goblins? Um, I'm not allowed to do that here. So I, I just feel like the light from the loam thing is too cute. We'll untap Mox Opal. We don't have a Galvanic Relay either. So I think I'm pressured here to Echo of Aeons. Yeah, that's really all I can do. Okay. Burning Wish. So I'll grab the Echo. And now I will make three blue. We will Echo floating a single blue mana. Storm 7. Looks like it resolves. I mean, this is not bad. I have not played a land yet this turn. Let's Brainstorm. And they daze me. Okay. I am forced to pass the turn here, but our hand is not bad. Next turn, hopefully I can Dark Ritual Thoughtseize, untap my Monolith, play Paradox Engine, Lion's Eye Diamond. That is the game plan. Our opponent main phases a Brainstorm here. Plays a Scalding Tarn. So no Wasteland. Into a Dragon's Rage Channeler. They have six cards in hand. We find a Ponder. I think I'm going to play it slow. Actually, let's ponder here looking for a land. We did find lands. That's good. And then I'm going to be lazy and just untap the Grim Monolith now. We will pass. Our opponent plays a ponder. They shuffled on that ponder. And now a brainstorm. They surveil away a brazen borrower and their Dragon's Rage Channeler is delirious. They play a Scalding Tarn. So this person just doesn't draw Wasteland. Big fan of that. They have six cards in hand. Play Misty Rainforest. And then let's Dark Ritual. Thought sees you. They fetch in response, grabbing a Volcanic Island. And they're going to Brainstorm in response. Surveilling away a Spell Pierce. They just have Double Days. Wow. Okay. Sweet. So we will now tap tap use the grim or the manifold key to untap grim monolith and then tap that for mana we will play paradox engine and then play lion's eye diamond untap our three artifacts on the battlefield green we'll make a bunch of colorless mana actually let's keep the manifold key untapped oh no i, I forgot i was going to untap i was like oh i don't want to tap it and then one ring yeah i just missed out on two colorless mana whoops Okay, so my bad. We'll draw one card and then we will untap the one ring. Slight misplay there on my part, but I don't think it's going to matter. We'll draw two now. Tap this opal for a blue. Let's play a veil of summer. Storm is seven. We'll draw three cards off the one ring. Untap the one ring. Draw four cards now. Tap the opal for red, the grim monolith, play burning wish, everything untaps, and we will now go grab the tendrils of agony. Let's draw five, because I can. You know, it's what I'm here for, so. Woo woo! Okay, we got game number one. When our deck draws the single paradox engine, we cannot be stopped! Alright, so now to win the post board games versus Delver, with a single carpet of flowers. Okay, so one of the big upgrades to the Epic Storm recently has then been that Beseech the Mirror allows you to naturally beat things like Nullrod sometimes. We're playing a deck today that cannot naturally beat Nullrod, so that's a slight concern of mine. Uh, so we definitely want the Besaju. This might be a deck that wanted Abrupt Decay in the board over the Echoing Truth, just because you're only playing the one Besaju and you can't naturally beat the artifacts. That wasn't something I considered. However, Abrupt Decay in your four Urza Saga deck, maybe that doesn't work. Uh, I'm not really too strong-willed or opinioned on that. Board out, one Mox Opal, and one Grim Monolith. Let's try this. Sure. I mean, we need a protection spell, but this hand is very good. Turn one Scalding Tarn into a Channeler. Sure. I love Taponda. Play Lotus Petal. Use Misty Rainforest. Grab Underground Sea. Let's play Dark Ritual here. Play Grim Monolith. And Mox Opal. Looking to ponder into like a Veil of Summer or Thoughtseize here. 
None of those are things I want. We'll shuffle. All right, I'm just going to try jamming the ring. We're playing through days. Please resolve. A love it. Draw card. Beautiful. They have a wasteland. Goodbye, underground sea. So we'll untap and take one from the one ring. And now we'll draw two cards. Let's play Urza Saga. And then Carpet of Flowers. We'll switch phases. So we'll go to our second main phase. And now Carpet of Flowers can make a blue. And we'll play Ponder. And they're going to Fluster Storm my Ponder. I am very okay with that. All right, so Ponder will be countered. Our opponent attacks with a channeler and just passes. There's a weird skip there where I was a little uh, like lagged and all of a sudden went from Ponder being on the stack to them attacking. Um, so that was wild. There's the Saga triggers, Carpet triggers. Let's not use the Carpet right now. Let's draw three cards. Another Saga. Let's attempt a brainstorm here. They're going to daze. I guess I can let the surveil trigger happen. Oh, they're doing it because I didn't use carpet. That's fine. Uh, dark ritual. We will pay for the daze. Put back the underground sea and the other land. We'll play another Ursa saga. Activate the construct or activate to create the construct. And then I'm going to shuffle our deck using the Ponder. We have so many resources that I don't mind throwing away a Ponder here. Don't need another copy of the One Ring. We'll shuffle. Okay. It does feel like we're in a spot where we have everything and our opponent has nothing. They replay the Volcanic. Ouch. Target our opponent. I'll float a Colorless here. We'll grab Manifold Key. And now we'll target them with Carpet of Flowers for red mana. Let's draw four cards, play a land for turn. Let's Veil of Summer, and that resolved. Let's untap the One Ring using the colorless we have floating. And our opponent just got bored and conceded. I was going to take way more actions, but can't stop them from conceding. We're 1-0. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Back for the second match. Sure. Seems delightful. Keep. No clue what our opponent's playing today. But I am likely going to try to put a one ring on the stack on turn one. Alright, they kept five cards. Play an Urza's Saga. Lotus Petal. Let's try a Grim Monolith. Another Lotus Petal. The One Ring. And they have a force of will exiling paradoxical outcome. <laughs> sure. Uh, we'll play out the Lion's Eye Diamond just in case they're on an Echo of Aeons build. Most lists aren't, but just in case. There's no reason to hold it in our hand. We're not even playing Galvanic Relay today. Ancient Tomb. And their own copy of Grim Monolith. There's a Saga that goes to the second chapter. We'll play another copy of Saga. And pass the turn. They had five mana, and they play their own copy of the One Ring. So I'm not going to discard my hand to make a construct if that's the case. They have three cards in their hand here. They play City of Traders, and it looks like they're passing. So the pair of sagas trigger. So one of them goes up to the second chapter. The other one, I will add a colorless right now, and then we'll search. Let's grab Manifold Key. Play the Bloodstained Mire, we will fetch. We'll grab Volcanic Island. Play Grim Monolith. And then we'll pass the turn. The One Ring brings our opponent to 14 life. They have three cards here. They activate up to five. They go to 12 life. 10 life. This looks like a Phyrexian Metamorph. They're going to copy my key. No, they copy Grim Monolith. Interesting. Lotus Petal. So this might be an outcome then? Another Lotus Petal, Atawara. 
This seems like it's an outcome. And it is. So I'm going to be lazy here. I'm going to tap for three. We'll make a construct. And then untap a grim monolith. And then I'm just going to let our opponent do their thing. Our opponent plays Lotus Petal into Grim Monolith. Now a Basalt Monolith. Lotus Petal and the One Ring. Okay, so we will draw for turn. Dark Ritual does not help me here. So I guess we will make another Construct. And then untap the Grim Monolith. And let's grab a Mox Opal. Pass the turn. Our opponent has protection from the One Ring, so there's no real point in attacking here. The One Ring brings them down to 9. And they play another copy of the One Ring going to 7 life. They choose to keep the new one and not the original. And then they draw one card. We draw another Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. They now go to 6 life. And now they'll draw 2 more cards. They play a Grim Monolith. They have 8 cards in hand. Like, we're, the odds we win this game are so low. Like, our opponent would just have to completely brick. And they still have a Phyrexian Metamorph to copy the One Ring here. We know about the Metamorph. Our opponent plays a Coveted Jewel. Basalt Monolith. And a Giant Paradoxical... <coughs> excuse me, Paradoxical Outcome. Now they play a Chrome Mox. I mean, I'm probably just dead here. I have to be, right? They have 17 cards in their hand. They choose to play a Grim Monolith using two blue mana to do so. So my only hope here is that they somehow choke themselves on blue mana and I'm able to squeak out a win. Another Grim Monolith. And Coveted Jewel is back. And now they have the Transmute Artifact. So they can sacrifice the Coveted Jewel. They go get Paradox Engine. And then that's going to be the game. So they did it. I'm not going to say here. I've, I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't want to. Uh, I value my time. So we're going to go to the next one. I'm tired. It's been a long day. So if we can go to sideboard. Come on, Magic Elm. There we go. All right, so we want Haywire Might because it says it exiles, which means it can hit the One Ring. So we're interested in that. I think we also want the Thought Seizes. Or down on Mox Opal and Grim Monolith. We'll leave the one Thought Seize in the board. Let's try this. Game number two on the play. I don't think we're allowed to keep this. Mulligan. These hands just don't do anything. We'll go to five. Sure. We'll keep five, get rid of the Saga and the Brainstorm. So if you want to play turn one Thoughtseize, you have to think about how the mana base is constructed. There's no Badlands. So if you want to play turn one Thoughtseize into Burning Wish on turn two, you're literally not allowed to keep the Urza Saga here. So I am priced into keeping this hand. We'll play turn one Thoughtseize. Echoing Truth. That's a weird one. Uh, take their One Ring. Pass the turn. They play an Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Grim Monolith. That actually gets me kind of close to into Peer into the Abyss. I think I'm just going to play Monolith past the turn. We'll grab Taiga. Okay. That's five mana. Lion's Eye Diamond would bring me up to eight. So anything that is plus one mana next turn is Peer into the Abyss. They play City of Traitors and their own Grim Monolith. So they have one unknown card here. That should do it. Odds that that one unknown card is a Force of Will, roughly 5,000%. We'll tap the Grim Monolith for three colorless. Tiger for red. Burning Wish holding priority. We will then sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond for three black. Yes. Grab Peer into the Abyss. Target myself. That is Storm 4. I called it. Their card was Force. I... I don't know why I do this to myself. Brutal. Oh, it's an outcome for two. Please don't hurt me. I've been hurt before. A it resolves. Complain and succeed. My life motto. All right. We'll play a Mox Opal here. Lion's Eye Diamond. Another Lion's Eye Diamond. We'll play Bayou as our land for the turn. Play a Grim Monolith. That for some more mana. Play another Grim Monolith. Another copy of Mox Opal, Storm 11. Play out Lotus Petal. Play the Manifold Key. Oh, there's still so many cards in my hand. I thought I was at the end. All right. We'll cast a few more. 
Firm is currently 15. Tap the opal for black. We'll play Dark Ritual. Sacrifice a petal for red. Tap the Grim Monolith. And then Burning Wish. If our opponent for some reason has something right now, we can just Veil. But I don't want to show our opponent the Veil of Summer if I don't have to. And then we'll Tendrils our opponent. Off the game number three. I think I'm just going to resubmit here. Actually, yeah, let's board out a Saga. I want all eight protection spells in the main deck, and I don't know how good of a Saga matchup this really is anyway. Game number three, we're on the draw. This hand is very close. They kept seven. Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal. The One Ring, they have three cards in hand. Up to four. They play a Lotus Petal, down to three cards. Come on, Dark Ritual. Burning Wish. I think I'm supposed to just play the Monolith here. And we'll pass the turn. I feel like we're... The fact that we didn't have the One, the one Ring on turn one... I feel like we're going to fall far, like, too far behind too quickly this game. We needed to spike a Dark Ritual there, so that way I could have had turn one ring plus Veil vale of Summer. They play City of Traitors. They have five cards still in their hand. They cast a Basalt Monolith. This looks like a Phyrexian Metamorph now. And they copy the One Ring. That's interesting. So they must really value the protection. Oh, no, they didn't even get the protection, right? No, they did. Okay. So they're at four cards in hand. I'd like a land here so that way I can play the One Ring with Veil back up. I think we just have to disrespect because if I wait, I'm going to lose. So let's play the One Ring. It somehow resolves. Wow. I'm a little surprised by that. We'll draw a card. So the one thing about these decks is their blue count is criminally low. Like way lower than it should be. They play like 16 to 18 blue cards. We'll put back two copies of the One Ring. Pass the turn. So now they're going to 12 life. And they'll draw two more cards back up to seven in hand. They're now going to 10 life. For another copy of the One Ring. Okay. They draw another card. Ancient Tomb does not deal them damage because they have protection. They have a Mox Opal. Four cards in hand. So this could be a pretty good paradoxical outcome if they wanted it. We will lose one to the One Ring. We'll draw a One Ring that we don't want. And there's still another one on top of our deck. We'll play a Ponder. And shuffle this. <laughs> another Veil. We'll draw two cards. Play Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm going to see if I can get them to bite on countering a Veil of Summer here. Like, we don't need three Veils anyway. So if this just doesn't do anything, I'm okay with that. And they're going to outcome in response. Wait, is this a Hardcast Force? Good deal. Okay, play the Saga. We will pass the turn. I don't know how I'm still in this game. I feel like I should have lost this a while ago. Our opponent activates the rain. They draw two. They have six cards in hand. They play City of Traitors. And they have Paradox Engine, so I've probably lost this now. That's unfortunate. So now the Chrome Mox resolves. They play a Coveted Jewel. Yeah, there's no stopping them from this point. I'm willing to concede and save my time. We are now one in one, three matches left to go. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. We're back for the third match. I'm on the draw and this hand is unplayable. Mulligan. Uh, sure, we'll try this. Keep bottom a burning wish. Ancient tomb. We're getting moon stomped. Fable of the mirror breaker. Okay. Draw another land. Not really a card we needed here. They discard a City of Traitors. They play a Basic Mountain. Into Blood Moon. Okay, Blood Moon really doesn't matter that much for us. Just don't play Urza's Saga. I'm begging you, don't do it. Okay, Grim Monolith will pass. They have transformed their Fable into Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Now they have a Broadside Bombardiers. We might be in trouble now. 
Okay, they did not fling anything at me. Let's play the one ring. It triggers, we gain protection from everything. And then we'll draw a card. Mox Opal. So next turn, can I peer into the abyss? Yes. So let's go grab the peer. Play Burning Wish. I probably didn't need to play out the Opal. Guess it dodges Chalice of the Void though. Pass the turn. They play Chrome Mox. Chalice of the Void on zero. They meant to do one, but they played it on zero. Ah, that honestly might be good enough anyway. Because now I'd have no mana floating post peer into the abyss. So I need like a couple insane draws between my draw step and the one ring. Veil of Summer was actually very good. Um, so if I hit another Mox Opal, we could do it here. Let's draw. I'd also take another one ring. Hmm. That doesn't do it. So what are my options here? I'm at 13 life. I guess I'll play the Misty. I'm not really sure what to do. So I guess I can play the Grim Monolith. And then tap the Monolith. Tap the Taiga. We can Burning Wish that Storm 3 for Grape Shot. Okay, I'll deal 1 to them. And I'll kill the Broadside. I think that's my best option here. And then we'll pass. They make a copy of the... Uh, Goblin Shaman, and then they can untap and swing for six. Sure. They attack, they create a bunch of treasure. I'm at seven. We're going to lose two life to the One Ring. I'm at five. Another Dark Ritual. That's not bad. Let's draw three cards. Those were not good cards, though. So I think we're pressured here to try to win through the Chalice of the Void on zero without being able to make green mana. We'll play Grim Monolith. Tap the monolith. Peer into the abyss targeting me from five life. Okay, we will play Misty Rainforest. Dark Ritual. There's a Chalice of the Void in play. So we found a Grim Monolith. It's the last one in the deck. So I currently have six mana, which is enough to Burning Wish into Tendrils. So I guess actually all I need to do is play zero mana artifacts into the Chalice here. So that's Storm Six. Play Burning Wish, that's Storm 7. Tundras of Agony would be Storm 8. Target you. That was a cool one. Sweet. Moving to the sideboard. I think we probably want the Haywire Might, the Viseju, Echoing Truth. Veil of Summer is not amazing here. Neither is Thoughtseize on the draw. I guess on the draw, Veil of Summer is better than Thoughtseize. I think Shadow Spear is too slow in this matchup. Let's try this. Our opponent is kept seven. So will we. Turn one, Null Rod. That was not very nice. We draw a third copy of Urza Saga. We'll play a Ponder. I think we're supposed to shuffle this. We draw Bayou. We will pass the turn. They have a tap land and then they pass. I'm going to play Urza Saga. And then we'll play Grim Monolith only for artifact count. For our constructs. Pass the turn. They have land number three into a broadside bombardiers. Okay. Lotus petal. I'll play another saga here. So one of the things about being a dark ritual saga deck is there's going to be a point in which I'm going to lose this one and this gains uh, up to the second chapter on our next turn. And I can dark ritual and do both. They have land number four. Pretty scary. Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Yeah, I'm definitely in trouble. So they have three cards in hand, one of which is a basic mountain. They swing for two. I'll go to 16. This has menace, so I can't block with one construct. I could block with multiple, but not one. On their end step, we will create a construct. Three, three. And now we'll draw for turn. So with these triggers on the stack, drawing Veil Summer here was not very good. I will play Dark Ritual. And we can activate. Okay, and then we'll go grab an artifact out of our deck. Um, Haywire might seems decent. It blocks and gains me two life. And then play the Bayou. Actually, I could play another Saga. Actually, another Saga is probably better here. And then still in my main phase, we will make another Construct. So now this one's a 6-6. Six, six. I mean, should I just pass? How do they swing? I guess I could steal the initiative from them. 
So we'll swing six. I am the initiative. Ha 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 ha. We don't have any B6 though. Nice null rod opponent. Does it come in playable? I'm really hoping I don't lose after saying that. I have four cards in hand. On my next turn, I can do the dark ritual double construct thing again. And they just conceded. Yes, get out of here, Nolrod. Get out of here. What's good? All right, so we're now two and one. Two matches left to go. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Let's go. Match number four, we're on the play. This hand does not function. We will mulligan. Um, I think I'll keep this and we'll bottom the second copy of the One Ring. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling that our opponent is on Reanimator. So maybe it's just the Avatar. I don't know. But I'm going to choose to leave open Veil of Summer rather than playing Ponder. Watery Grave into a main phase Brainstorm. Digging for that grief. No grief yet. Brainstorm. That's a card I'd like to play here. I like the Saga, so we'll probably keep that. But back Bayou and Ponder. I'm going to choose to disrespect here. I'm going to tap out for the Ponder. If they didn't have Grief on turn one, I'm not going to play around it on turn two. Bossies does exist, but I'm not going to choose to play around that. Ponder. They daze, that's fine. Pass the turn. They play Wasteland. They go after Underground Sea. Wonder if this is a good Saga turn. Yep, it's a good Saga turn. So we're gonna play the Saga and then play Grim Monolith. Pass the turn. They play Flooded Strand. Another Saga. I'm going to space them out here. Actually, I'm going to fetch now in case they play a Wasteland. Grab Bayou. Watery Grave is back. On their end step, let's create a Construct. And now we'll draw for turn. Create another construct. Okay. Go grab a manifold key. Play another Urza Saga. And Lotus Petal. Let's go to combat. Swing for five. I'm going to Veil of Summer here because if they let it resolve, I can play the One Ring. They cycle a Street Wraith. They snuff out again. Veil of Summer. They're going to fetch. And they flash in an Orgish Bowmasters. I will go to 17. Veil of Summer happens. So now they get another Bowmaster trigger. And they're at 4 life. We will untap the Grim Monolith using the key. Tap the Grim Monolith. Play the One Ring. The One Ring triggers. We gain protection from everything. And then I will draw a card. Bowmasters triggers. They target themselves. They should target their Orc Army, I think, but it's not a huge deal. They play a 10 10 copy of Death's Shadow. So they're currently dead to Manifold Key making the construct unblockable. Let's Thought Seize them and see if they have a removal spell. They fetch to two life in response. And they're going to daze. I'm going to pay for the daze. Because now their hand is land plus one unknown. So they're just dead. We'll play Grimonolith. And use the secret mode of Manifold Key to make our creature so it can't be blocked this turn. Sweet. We likely want Carpet of Flowers, the Haywire Might. I kind of like Shadow Spear in this matchup for getting over the Orc Tokens, the Besaju. Ward out one Opal, one Grimonolith. Alright, I'm, I'm going to be a crazy person. I'm going to board out a Fetch. We already have 16 lands. Do I really need 17? Actually... What if we just board out Diamond? Like, it's not even that good in this deck, I don't think. Like, what if we just board out four copies of Lion's Eye Diamond against the deck with a bunch of discard and forces? Is that insane? I think I kind of want to try this. I, I don't know if I've ever boarded out four Lion's Eye Diamond in my life, but here we are. I will keep Main Phase Watery Grave into Thoughtseize. They discard the one ring and they have four cards left in their hand. Dark Ritual. We'll play Lotus Petal. And then just pass the turn. This allows us to Veil Summer through a daze. 
Recycle Street Wraith, that's fine. They're at 14. Our opponent plays a Brainstorm after playing Verdant Catacombs. So, assuming that they use the Verdant, they can then fetch down to 11 life, which means that they can play a Death Shadow this turn. And that's exactly what happens. Got it, they have three cards. We draw a Mox Opal. Let's Brainstorm. Wow. Okay. What is the move? So if I hypothetically put back Burning Wish Dark Ritual, I can then play Mox o That doesn't play around days. So I guess it's Grim Monolith Burning Wish. Because that allows me to play around days. They know that I have Veil of Summer, so they're not going to fall for Veil, I don't think. We'll cast the Dark Ritual. Play Grim Monolith. Play the Mox Opal. And then add three colorless, the one ring. It resolves, we get protection from everything. And I'll activate it now. Play around Orcish Bowmasters. Pass the turn. They have a wasteland. Buy you down. No, I mean, they choose to attack. It doesn't deal any damage because I have protection from everything. Another shadow. We're going to lose one life, so we go to 18. We'll draw for turn. Another Veil of Summer. Let's draw two. Nothing to do. So we will pass the turn. If they have Dress Down, they have the combo kill here. Dress Down would be 26 damage. They have a Flooded Strand, though. That is a ton of damage here. So that's 10 damage currently if they have a third Watery Grave in their deck. And they should. They do. So I'll take 10. So they're representing Lethal. The best thing that could happen to me here is that our opponent plays a Blue or Black spell. And they do not. I'm going to fetch just a thin. I go to seven. We'll grab a taiga. Okay, so this will put me to five draw for turn. Another misty. So if I fetch, I go to four. Let's grab another underground sea. Activate the ring to draw three. Okay, we found a burning wish. That's good. Play lotus petal. Firm is one. Firm two. Tap underground seas. Grim Monolith can be Storm 3. Tap the Tiger for Red, and then the Grim Monolith. Burning Wish. And I have enough here to Tendrils of Agony with Double Veil of Summer back up. A Force of Will, Exiling Force of Will, but they know that I have Veil of Summer. Firm is 6. And now Burning Wish just gets Tendrils of Agony, or we can get the Grape Shot. I'm sure all of you came here to watch Grape Shot, so... They're at 7. Who doesn't love Shots? Target them. I mean, we could have played Tendrils of Agony, but I didn't want to. We are now 3-1. The Epic Paradox coming through. I mean, we've only really had one Paradox win so far, but the One Ring has looked pretty impressive. I will say that. All right, match five coming up in just a moment. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Round number five, we're facing Maverick Legend Strass Daddy. So we need to keep an explosive hand against them. And here we have a Saga game, which might be okay. I'm going to try this. It's the Rainforest. We'll fetch. I'm having some fun with uh, our opponent. We usually have some good banter. They went on Eternal Dirtles. We're like, Storm players are the most vile people on the planet, etc., etc. And I've been giving them a tough time ever since. So I just told them that I hope they mulligan to zero, which no one would ever actually do, which is part of the joke. Our opponent plays a Verdant Catacombs and Savannah. Ignoble Hierarch, okay. So we'll play the Saga. And I think here I just want a Monolith, Monolith, One Ring. Okay. And then we'll draw a card. Pass the turn. They fetch. I'm guessing that the w blue, Green Sun for Collector Oof. Yep, so I kind of thought that this might be what they keep. And what we can do is just go for the Saga beatdown plan that we did in the other match. Unfortunately, this time we have the One Ring killing us as it happens. So we'll play another Saga. And then we'll play the Lion's Eye Diamond. Gotta grow those constructs. Knight of the Reliquary. 
Okay. On their end step, we will activate the Urza Saga to create a large construct. We will lose another life, and now Urza Saga goes up to the next chapters. We'll play a Dark Ritual, and now we will make another construct, and now we search for an artifact. I don't think I even want to show them the Manifold Key. Let's just grab a Lotus Petal, and then I will fetch and... I also don't want to show them any more colors, so let's just get another underground sea. I want our opponent to know as little as possible about our deck here. And then we'll attack. They're at 10 life now. Caracas. I'm trying to think what gets them out of this spot here. They play a green sun zenith for two. They get an outland liberator. And now they're going to use knight probably to grab wasteland, and they do. So they can block, block, activate, and then sacrifice to kill the unblocked construct. We draw a Bloodstained Mire. Let's ponder here. I like the Thoughtseize. Let's play that. I'll go to 13. Take the Swords to Plowshares. That was a very good find on the Thoughtseize. Attack for 24. So they'll block with the Hierarch and then sacrifice the Liberator to destroy the unblocked one. This is just lethal. Oh no, they'll, they'll take 8 to 2. They're going to keep the Hierarch around. Okay, that's fine. They are now at three life. So they have endurance and birds. They can make blockers here. Wow, they ripped a grist. No way. Oh, that's insane. Okay, we're in trouble. I need our top card is a brainstorm. I need to find an artifact here. Wow, grist being the top card was absolutely nuts. We'll get Taiga. Brainstorm. So we know the last two cards are Endurance Birds. We'll put those two on top. Play the Diamond. Play the Lotus Petal. And we need to swing out. They can Chump Block with the Insect Token. Do you have a Maze of Ith in this deck? You don't have a Maze of Ith. Come on. Guy's Cradle. Now they're going to flash in Endurance. I think our opponent found the line. I think I'm going to lose this. Although if they had done this on their main phase, they could have played the birds as a blocker too. So I think they kind of threw that equity there. Okay. The one ring damage might actually end up costing me. They make another 1-1 one, one instead of killing my construct token. Fiend Artisan. Yeah, I'm not winning this. They found the line. I mean, props to them. I really didn't think they were going to come back. Okay, so we lose game number one. Well, this looks weird. Um, okay. Switch this back to card view. I had to restart Magic Online in between match four and five. And, uh, you know, weird things. So I think we want the Thought Seizes. Probably the Consign and the Echoing Truth. The Spell Bomb, the Haywire Might, the Besaju. Probably Shadow Spear. Take out Veil of Summers. A lot of cards coming in. What to do, what to do. I feel like I don't want to board out Lion's Eye Diamond versus the Fast Deck. Maybe I brought out Ponders. Let's try this. Game number two, we're on the play. This is a hand that turn one echoes. I think I'm going to main phase a Brainstorm here. See if I can hit like a Mox Opal or something. And we did in fact hit a Mox Opal or something. Play Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, Lion's Eye Diamond. Am I getting Force of Vigored here? Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, and now we will Burning Wish, grab the Echo of Aeons, spin that wheel. Firm six. And it resolves. We'll play out Lotus Petal, and I think I'm going to Thought Seize here. Take the Force of Vigor. Pass the turn. When Swept Teeth, they do not Green Sun Zenith. We hit another Opal. I'm going to Brainstorm here to see if I can find Metalcraft. The answer was no. A little awkward. Put back a pair of Thoughtseize. We'll play Urza Saga. And the Lion's Eye Diamond. Yikes. They play a land we didn't know about here. So we know one of their draws now. They search out a Tropical Island. Orcish Bowmasters, sure. So now we're drawing a Thoughtseize. Another Force of Vigor. We will Echoing Truth. 
I'm trying to think of the way out of this, and I don't think there is one. If they're going to untap and green some Zenith for a collector roof, and I don't know how we win. Our hand is just so clunky. Yeah, like, I can bounce my own diamond, but what does that do? I guess I won't be able to cast the Echoing Truth later. It just doesn't matter. I've lost this game. And now I have to draw through two Thought Seasons that don't do anything. All right, our opponent has resolved Collector Roof. We're pretty much locked out of this game at this point. I'm going to uh, just save myself some time and concede. So we went 3-2. and two. You know, not the worst record ever. My honest thoughts. The One Ring overperformed. Uh, I do think the One Ring was pretty good. I thought Urza Saga was fine. It obviously won two games on its own, which is great. That said, the Paradox Engine transmute stuff was way too cute. Grim Monolith I found to be okay, but a little awkward at times, and I generally just didn't like the sideboard. So it's this isn't me trying to be overly harsh. It's just I don't know what problems this fixed. Meanwhile, we were a lot worse versus hate. And I think that's one of the biggest issues to me is like when you play these style of storm decks, you're really weak to collector roof. And this build is even weaker to collector roof. And I don't really see the benefits that said it was a lot of fun to play. And ultimately I do play magic to have fun. So that was cool. But uh, Belgrim, thanks again for the donation deck. I really do appreciate you everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And as always keep storming. Hey you, yeah you, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it, and if you're interested, you can visit theepicsworm.com slash donation decks to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel. You can even join me in a video in the epic tier, it's totally worth it, I promise, and uh, see ya, thanks for watching.